Good morning, Math 30-2s. All right, so today we're going to look at writing rational expressions in simplest form. So simplest form means the numerator and denominator have no factors in common other than 1. So express the following rational expression in simplest form, stating the non-permissible values as restrictions. All right, so we can see with 12x squared over 2x, we can divide both terms by 2x. So if we divide both terms by 2x. 12x squared divided by 2x is 6x, and 2x divided by 2x is 1. So we're left with 6x. And state the non-permissible values. Well, our denominator, 2x, can equal 0. Divide both sides by 2, so x cannot equal 0. There's our restriction. All right, so we're going to do that for each one of these. If I look at part B, I can factor out any complete factor. I can reduce any complete factor. So a plus 1 divided by a plus 1 leaves us with 1s. We're left with a minus 6 over a plus 7. State our non-permissible values as restrictions. Well, here, a can't equal negative 7. And we also have to look at this one. a can't equal negative 1. So it might be in our best interest to do the non-permissible values as restrictions before we start reducing. So let's do that. All right. So my denominator is 8y. That can never equal 0. Divide both sides by 8. y can equal 0. That's the restriction for part c. Now reduce. Let's factor the numerator. We take out a 2. I'm left with 4y plus 1. My denominator is 8y. I can reduce the 2 and the 8 by dividing them both by 2. And my simplest form rational expression now is 4y plus 1 over 4y. Now, I know we talked yesterday. Some of us want to try and reduce the 4y with the 4y. We can't do that because they're not... You can't reduce terms, like they said, right? We have to reduce factors. So the factor is 4y plus 1. There is not a 4y plus 1 in the denominator to reduce it with. So you can't reduce the term 4y and 4y. We look at part D. Let's state our non-permissible values first as restrictions. Before we do that, maybe let's factor this expression. So can't factor the numerator, but we can factor the denominator as 7 plus x times 7 minus x. The denominator 49 minus x squared is the difference of squares. I can now look at that factored expression and state my non-permissible values as restrictions. x cannot equal negative 7 from right there and positive 7 from right here. So my restrictions are x can't equal plus or minus 7. Now that I've factored and stated my non-permissible values, I can reduce any complete factor in the denominator with any complete factor in the numerator. x plus 7 and 7 plus x are the same, so I can divide them both by 1 or uh, divide them both by each other, and we end up with 1. So my simplest form of this expression is 1 over 7 minus x. All right. E, let's factor the numerator. I can take out a common factor of 4p. I'm left with 3p minus 2. In my denominator, I can take out a common factor of 2p squared. Divide both terms by 2p squared, I'm left with 3p minus 2. So I'm done factoring. Now I want to state my non-permissible values as restrictions. So the variable is p. p cannot equal right here. It can equal 0. And right here, I could set that 3p minus 2 can't equal 0. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides and then divide by 3. So p can't equal 2 thirds. That's the other non-permissible value. All right. We'll get there. So p can't equal 0, and we just saw that p can't equal 2 thirds. Set this equal to 0 and solve for p. Now let's go ahead and reduce. 4 and 2 are both divisible by 2. That leaves us with 2 and 1. p squared and p are both divisible by p. That leaves us with 1 and p. 
and 3p minus 2 is divisible by 3p minus 2 that leaves us with 1 and 1. So if I write down my numerator is 2 times 1 times 1 over 1 times p times 1. That's the simplest rational expression. And let's look at f. 3t squared minus 75, we can factor out from the numerator a 3. That leaves us t squared minus 25 over t plus 3t minus 5. And that is a difference of squares in my numerator. So 3 times t plus 5, t minus 5, all over t plus 3 times t minus 5. So I'm now finished factoring. I want to state my restrictions. t cannot equal. Here is negative 3, and here is positive 5. And I'm going to reduce any numerator with any denominator that are complete factors. So t minus 5 divided by t minus 5 is 1. There are no other common factors. So my numerator is 3 times t plus 5. Well, my denominator is t plus 3. All right. Let's look at what happens if we use a common factor of negative 1. So in the following example, a common factor of negative 1 can be used to simplify the rational expressions. Write the following rational expressions in simplest form. State restrictions on the variable. So step 1 is to factor. Well, a is already factored. So I'm going to state restrictions on the variable. So I would take 4 minus c, and that cannot equal 0. What value of c makes this true? So if I add c to both sides, c can equal 4. So that's my restriction. c cannot equal 4. Now I go ahead and reduce. If I want, I keep my c minus 4 in the numerator, and it tells us to take out a common factor of minus 1. So my denominator, if I factor out a negative 1, 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4, and negative c divided by negative 1 is a positive c. Well, now I notice that c minus 4 and negative 4 plus c are the same thing. All right. So I've got 1 over negative 1, which is really negative 1. So if I recognize that these are exactly opposite factors, c minus 4 and 4 minus c, we can divide those out and be left with negative 1 every single time. So I don't have to go through this step right here if I recognize that. Let's look at part b. Step 1, let's factor. In the numerator, I'm going to factor out a 2p squared. That leaves me with a p minus 2. In my denominator, I'm going to factor out an 8, which leaves me with a 2 minus p. So I'm done factoring. I can now state restrictions. p cannot equal. This is a non-variable factor, so I don't have to worry about that when I'm stating restrictions. Here's a variable factor, 2 minus p. What value of p makes this thing into 0? Well, that value is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. We can't have that. So p cannot equal 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and reduce. The 2 and the 8 are both divisible by 2. There are no p's to worry about there. p minus 2 and 2 minus p are exactly opposite. So if I divide them out, I'm left with a negative 1 and a 1. So I go straight to this negative 1 idea instead of having to go through all this factoring. I just recognize that p minus 2 and 2 minus p are opposites, and they factor out as negative 1. So the simplest expression would be 1 times p squared times negative 1, or negative p squared, over 4 times 1, which is 4. So that's the simplest form right there. All right. All right. Now, if we look at... Example number three, I haven't gotten the sheet in the screencast. You just have to bear with me. Example number three, the area in square meters of a rectangular plot can be represented by the expression x plus 6 all squared. So you guys have this at the top of page 434. And the length in meters of the plot can be represented by x squared minus 36. This is our area, and we are told that the length is x squared minus 36. Write and simplify rational expression that represents the width of the plot. 
that's part A. So we know that area equals length times width. So I know that area is x plus 6 all squared. That's what we're told. Area is x plus 6 all squared. We know the length is x squared minus 36 times the width. So we have to figure out what the width is. I'm going to divide both sides then by x squared minus 36. So the width should equal the area x plus 6 all squared divided by the length x squared minus 36. So now we have our rational expression. So step one, let's write this as factors. x plus 6 all squared is x plus 6 times x plus 6. Let's factor x squared minus 36, the difference of squares. That's x plus 6 times x minus 6. Once I'm done factoring, I should always state my restrictions. So right here, x can equal negative 6. Here, x can equal positive 6. So x can not equal plus or minus 6. Those are my restrictions. Now I can factor. Any complete factor I can reduce. x plus 6 divided by x plus 6 leaves me with 1 over 1. So I'm left with x plus 6 over x minus 6. That would be the expression for the width of the plot. So the width of the plot is x plus 6 over x minus 6. Part B of this question asks... If the length of the plot is 28 meters, determine the value of x if x is greater than 0. So if the length equals 28, and we were told that the length was also x squared minus 36, I can write an equation. L is 28, so 28 goes in for L. So 28 equals x squared minus 36. So if I set this equation equal to 0 by adding 28 to both sides, I get x squared minus 64. All right. That's a quadratic equation. We've solved quadratic equations. I can factor this as x plus 8 times x minus 8. And therefore, I can state that x can equal negative 8 or x can equal positive 8. Those are the two solutions. It tells me in the question that x must be greater than 0 so this one doesn't make any sense. So the length of the plot is 28. The value of x must then equal 8. Part C asks us, the plot has been treated with fertilizer at a cost of $2.40 per square meter. Calculate the cost of the treatment. So we're told the area was x plus 6 all squared. And the cost is $2.40 per square meter. So we figured out eight to be, sorry, x to be 8 meters. So my area would be 8 plus 6 all squared. And I multiply that by $2.40. So 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 squared is what? So 14 squared is 196 times 240. So our total cost would be $470.40. Right. Great. I ask you guys to do questions one through eight. I think we can do all those. So please complete all questions one through eight in lesson three, starting on page 434. Thank you, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll answer any questions you have then.